For years, the JW Marriott Fuquak was hands down the best resort on the island. With the recent opening of the Regent though, this fantastical fever dream of a resort's number one spot may be on the line. Join me for a full tour and review, and welcome to the island. For those of you that are new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. My name is Kevin, and I am the Flip Flop Traveler. I think the internet is in need of a whole lot more honesty when it comes to airline and hotel content, and that's why I'm here. I make trip reports and high-end hotel reviews, and I always self-fund my trips. In fact, you'll always be able to find the exact price that I paid in the description below. This content was created without the knowledge of, or compensation from Marriott, because I want a typical experience. So in this video today, I'm going to give you nothing more than my own personal, honest, and unbiased opinion based on my own experience. The amount of attention that this hotel received when it opened back what feels like decades ago in 2017 was quite a sight to behold. Since its opening, its style has been duplicated. You can kind of see it right here, literally all over the island. Think backlot European street scene movie set meets Disney World meets cotton candy factory explosion. Et voila. And here we are now, approaching the gates of Lamarck University. Nearly all non-international brand developments on the island since its opening have been created in its image. It was that big of a deal. Sun Group, the owner of the hotel, actually created another island theme park to the south of Fuquak, and let's just say, inspiration from this property was taken. This doesn't affect the resort itself, but I'm just trying to frame how big of a deal this place was for many years when it first opened. So, based on the attention, you can imagine my expectations were pretty high. As we pull up and have a walk around the entrance, let me tell you a little bit about the history of this property. As the story goes, between 1880 and 1940, the Lamarck University was thriving with local children and the children of colonial residents. In the 1940s, the university was closed, mothballed, and stood still in time. A number of the buildings were lost, and all of it fell into disrepair. Luckily, Sun Group saw the potential and commissioned the world-famous architect Bill Bensley to return the site to its former glory, this time in the form of Fuquak's most elegant international five-star resort. So I should mention a few things. First, what I just read to you is a quote from the inside cover of the student book, the name of the resort guide which I'll show you a bit more later. Second. No, this was not a university. It was built brand new for this hotel. This resort is a storytelling experience with every minute detail designed by Bensley. That part is true. Third, at no point do any of the staff break the fourth wall. The bit and the story is maintained meticulously throughout the resort. If you go on TripAdvisor, you'll see this in action with the hundreds of reviews the resort has raving about the incredible restoration of a heritage university. And last, the reason they can maintain that bit so well is because it is crafted that well. But I'd be lying if I said that the elements have been kind to all aspects of the resort. I'll get into that more later. For now, let's enjoy what I do think is one of the more beautifully designed lobby and reception areas in the entire country. From wall to wall, ceiling to floor, Every detail has either been custom crafted for or curated for the resort's many maintained themes. Lamarck's mascot, the Ridgebacks, is one of those themes, named after the Fuhuac Ridgeback, which is actually a dog breed from the island. Bensley has been featured on my channel multiple times, and he has a few different types of works that he creates. Primarily, cultural integration properties, or storytelling properties. All of his projects in Vietnam, from the Hotel de la Coupole in Sapa, to the M Gallery in Thu, to the Intercontinental Sun Peninsula, to here at the JW, lean heavily into the storytelling side of things. A 
Upon arriving, you'll be offered a cold towel and a refreshingly tart hibiscus iced tea. Surrounded by greenery and soaring paned windows, the reception area is located off of one side of where we are now. Here's your friendly reminder to please click that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and share this video with friends and family. Those are truly the easiest ways, all free for you, to help the channel continue to grow. If you'd like to support me further, my Patreon is linked in the description below. Thanks very much in advance. After taking in all those beautiful details, you'll be led around the resort by staff, first on a quick tour down Rue Lamarck and then onto your room. Bensley named the fictional University Lamarck after Jean-Baptiste Lamarck, a French naturalist. And from that, one of the other themes of the resort, the display and preservation of flora and fauna. This is definitely not a typical resort layout, so in order to help you understand where we're walking right now, let me show you here on the map. The resort is located way down at the far southern tip of the island, and it's one of the few major resorts on the island that give you a sunrise view, the vast majority of facilities being on the west side of the island. Zooming in further, we can see the relatively compact size of the resort. It doesn't feel small, but I think intimate is a fair word. The buildings to the far left are some of the super pricey oceanfront villas, with the majority of the rooms being centered around the two primary pools. Besides the pools and one restaurant, all of the resort's other facilities are located over here on what we call Rue Lamarque, the reception area at the top of it from where we're about to walk down the street. If you're curious about the best time of the year to visit, or driving times and taxi fares, this is the graphic for you. The street is lined from tip to tip with different facilities. The first space we come to is the Lamarck Lounge. Open throughout the day, the lounge seems to be utilized quite a bit for events and guest arrivals, but also has a game room attached to it that's open for guest use. On the left hand side, you'll find some of the local shops and behind that we have the JW Garden. Also back there are quite a few of the event spaces and such. One design detail that I do love about the property are the number of retro billboard style murals throughout. When doing some research on this property, I came across the Point Guy's review on the property. I've reviewed or at least stayed in quite a few properties that he's reviewed and I generally share similar sentiments. The title of his review for this one was Whimsical But Worn. He says, quote, Though fantastical and over the top, this university themed resort is already showing its age via weathered paint, faded fabrics and some rundown facilities. Compared to the Regent, the guest experience doesn't feel nearly as luxurious, personalized, or detail-oriented." While 
Walking further, we pass by the Department of Physical Education and the Spa, and stop by the Working Lantern Workshop, where you can create your own for a fee. Don't worry, I'll be back to the spa and gym later on. For now, let me explain why I agree and disagree with the points guy. I agree some areas are a bit worn. I think Rue Lamarck itself could use a bit of sprucing up. The whole thing just looks like a bit of an old sidewalk. There are some cheaper materials used, some of it a bit worn. He is correct, but I don't think it matters here nearly as much as at many other resorts. This place is an experience, and I reckon less than 1% of guests would notice the things that he and I could nitpick. So I really don't think it's worth diving into in this video. As far as comparing it to the Regent, there he is absolutely correct. If we're talking about the best resort on the island, the Regent is very easily the winner. But the JW is still definitely number two, and that's not nothing. The resorts are so unbelievably different though, that I think they both have a home here. Though I would say that the JW is more suited for younger families, whereas the Regent is better for couples or families with older kids. If you head down to the description, you'll find my next 5 videos to come out, as well as other bits and pieces like the soundtrack titles featured in this video. On your way down there, don't forget to subscribe. I release full-length videos every Thursday and Saturday. Down here we have French & Co, which is the on-site deli, which also serves up afternoon tea. Walk a little bit further down and we reach the beach area, which is just in front of most of the dining venues. Before we head over to the pools and beach itself, I think this is a good point for me to show you a few of the highlights from the student book and just how comprehensive it is. This one is over the top, but I really do wish that more resorts would put together guides like this one. It has information on each of the venues, a resort map, a QR code treasure hunt, and a lot more including separate activity calendars for kids and adults, which you can see here. The resort has four pools open for guests. The first small one is for kids, just across from the kids club, and the other three larger ones are open for all. If I had to critique one thing about the hotel design, it would be this pool. If you've seen any photos or ads about this property, surely you've seen this gorgeous shell-shaped iridescent pool. We'll get to that in a bit. It is beautiful and it is here. But I don't understand the point of making another pool right next to it that feels really cheap and generic and kind of like an afterthought. The resort has a total of 244 rooms, suites, and villas, and the majority of them are in low-rise buildings in a broad U-shape around the pool and garden areas. Really beautiful gardens at that, I really should add. The beach area itself is pristine, and the water is generally as calm as you see it here today. The clarity may be affected by the time of year, though. The beach has a variety of seating options and is kept just spotlessly clean.
And here we have the much more famous of the three primary pools. Lastly, there is one other, again, pretty generic looking, pool at the far south end, near the Ritzy Titsy Villas. Now we're going to turn and head in the general direction of my room, which is a garden walkout room similar to what you see here. Behind the U-shape of the buildings is a buggy pathway and some of the other guest room categories. As far as all of the standard rooms and facilities go, they are all fully accessible. And continuing with the university theme, there is also a jogging track. When was the last time your luxury resort had a jogging track like this? The blue building over there is where my room is. Each of the buildings is a different university department and all of the signage is marked as such. It may take a bit of getting used to on your first day though. I was staying in the Department of Zoology. The rooms are elegant and fresh with soaring ceilings, especially on the ground floor. The mini bar was well stocked with glass bottled reverse osmosis water and genuine Nespresso pods, with a few other chargeable drinks and snacks below. There are three things that I don't really like about the room, and the first two can be seen here. First up is that gray carpet, if we want to call it that. It's one of those outdoor plastic carpets. Floor covering might be a better word. I find these, generally speaking, to hold quite a bit of dirt and are simply just not nice to walk on. The second thing is the layout. If we look at the size of the room, the entire space, it is plenty large enough for a standard room, but the layout prioritizes design over comfort and practicality. There's a massive amount of dead space given to the entry hall, closet space, and walk-in shower, which results in what feels like a cramped bedroom area. Having two double beds in here, or worse, a rollaway bed, I honestly don't even know where you would walk. 
The rollaway bed would best fit in the bathroom, as you'll see. The high ceilings and design in general are one thing that I do love about the room, and the second is the bathroom. The windows, decorative details, and slab marble add a really, really upmarket feel to what could have easily gone in a tacky direction. The windows, by the way, are just looking out into a shaft. There's no way for another guest to walk by. I love the shower. I think it's the tallest rainfall shower that I've ever seen anywhere. But I also hate it. Let me explain. Personally, I like my rooms to be kept quite cold for sleeping, but I don't necessarily want my bathroom to be freezing cold. Normally it's not, well actually never is it an issue. But considering the open air nature of the shower, combined with the fact that the water literally cooled down before it hit you it had to travel so far, made for a very chilly shower experience. As silly as it may sound for South Vietnam, if I was visiting again, I'd actually request a space heater, just for the bathroom, just for showers. The closet was in the form of a stylized wardrobe with an open section in the middle for luggage. Finally, just off of the hallway, we have the separate tiny toilet room with its own little tiny sink. I did think the rolled washcloths in here, with a bin specifically for them though, was a nice touch. Okay, time to head outside. The condensation on the windows giving you a pretty good idea of how humid it was. The outdoor space is my final favorite thing about the room. If I came back, I'd probably want an ocean view just to change things up. But I did enjoy the added private space out here, which would be great for a family. If you could figure out where everyone was going to sleep. Okay, food and drink time. The first restaurant was locked up like Fort Knox and is Pink Pearl, the Vietnamese fine dining restaurant. During my stay, this was only open on Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. On their website, they're currently showing only set menus as the dining option, each with a truffle theme and a price tag to match. Next up is probably one of the more cleverly designed over-the-top venues that I've ever seen, the Department of Chemistry Bar. I'll let this one mostly speak for itself as I tell you about the service at the resort. It was either really, really good or really mediocre. I'd say the highlights of the staff were easily at the restaurants and bars. That said, as with literally all resorts on the island, the staff are overall very young. So what they don't score in poise they'll generally try to make up for an enthusiasm with better than average English skills from the staff that I interacted with.
Near the beach in the center of the resort is Red Rum, which is a Latin-inspired bar and grill, which is open for dinner daily. Finally, we have the magnificent Tempus Fugit, Latin for Time Flies, and styled as the university's Department of Architecture, with endless small details which just kept adding to the charm. For that reason, this is where I had dinner. This is their all-day menu, which had a variety of cuisines on offer. For starters, I chose the veal with tuna sauce, which was out of this world good. Veal is not so common to see on menus in Vietnam, so I knew I had to try it, and I recommend that you do as well. For the main, I went slightly more Vietnamese with bò lục lạc, or shaking beef as it's usually translated to. Shaking referring to the wok frying motion, not scared cows. Tender beef, actual wok hay, and peppers and onions which had enough of the rawness taken out of them. The next morning, the sun was trying to show its face, but it couldn't gather up the courage to get through the clouds. Heading back to Tempest Fujit for a pretty spectacular buffet. I don't want to distract from all of the beautiful details, so I'll definitely let this speak for itself.
I don't actually remember how many times I went back for that pork belly. It was that good. Easily the best thing on the buffet. There was also an egg station, which you could order omelets from, but also had things like Eggs Benedict, which were expertly prepared and almost piping hot. Okay, let's check out the spa and fitness center as I bring together my final thoughts. There's one very specific thought that I had when I was putting together the graphics for this video. When a Bill Bensley property is no longer the crown jewel in its hometown, does it begin to transition from fantastical and unique to tired and tacky? Part of this is up to personal taste levels, and part of it is yet to be seen, but I think it's a valid question. Bensley's properties in Sapa, Hanoi, Da Nang, and until recently here, are generally considered the best hotel in their respective city. Only time will tell if the other locations, or even here, will be able to maintain or take back those titles. I really do hope that you enjoyed this colorful video today. If you did, please be sure to click that thumbs up button and subscribe with notifications on so you don't miss out on my twice weekly videos. I'll see you next time on board Royal Jordanian in business class from Athens to Amman. Oh, and as always, thanks for watching until the end.